is that, like, you know what I'm saying, people don't like. Like, ZSS beats Luigi, ZSS yep. beats Rob, yep. you know what I'm saying? I think I think ZSS is, like, a really good, solid 10. Yeah. That's my thought. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah. I could definitely see that. But and then, like, Game & Watch is, like, an 11 kind of yeah. situation. So we're going to see if it works out for Kuro here. We're going to get uh, Kuro going up against Umeki. And his top 128 winners, best of five. Right off the bat, Kuro getting aggressive. And got the dot eyes. Give me this combo, 50%. Ooh. All he needs is that one opening. One exchange. <laughs> that one exchange. <laughs> one exchange, 50%. Kuro read him twice and got 30. And then he, he literally just whip punished the guy 50 for it. <laughs> See, and this is where uh, the matchup is going to be <laughs> the, the difference maker, right? How you space uh, the, the Zare midair, right? Yeah. How is, it can kind of spiral out of control at this point, though, because now the onus is on Kuro to approach, and Umeki is going to take advantage of that so well. Like, Peach's whip punishing in this game is, like, bar none. So good. Oh, the coverage. Yeah, man, like, if you if you went the other way, bro, you might have uh, went the, that way, which is the blast zone. This is what we talk about. You, you touch Peach's shield, and then she buries you with like 150, and you just pass away. You die. Yeah, the one thing, though, that Kuro has is the, the Zare is pretty safe, and so is the uh, the Nair on shield, right? So you just got to be careful on what your mix-up is after the Nair. All right, good on Kuro with the, uh, with the Nair off stage. Very well done. Two stocks apiece. Mechie finding his way in. Yeah, you better be careful aggressive about, lane. You better be careful about how you approach Peach, bro. See, he's doing stuff on the shield, and he, he jumped out of there, which is smarter. No. You can't punish that. <laughs> yeah. Not a ZSS. <laughs> yeah, the ZSS' fastest move out of shield is forward air, and I mean, you can only do it in front of you. Ooh. Didn't get the sweet spot. Not even no. get the spike on that one. Yeah, but Mechie held in. Potentially could have worked for him, but good DI from him. Kuro searching, looking for this one opening, but Umeki just chilling, happy to wait. And that's going to be a big punch. The turnip was coming down. Right, and just, just like, Peach has these like super compromising like routes to get back on like stage and stuff. Oh, caught the turnip again, and the fair, the, uh, the fair flow, man. Look, man, like she just does crazy, crazy damage, bro. I don't want to hear no Peach downplaying ever. This character is <laughs> so good, bro. It's, a, it's like, it's the hard part for Peach is getting that one opening, right? He actually just missed the combo twice. I was, I was, I, I fell for my life for But him. he still did 40. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh just my god. Down tilt. Oh, that could be yeah. a punish. Down tilt, forward air. Got him off stage. Look at that turnip fair. He gets it anyways, even though the turnip doesn't connect. Trying to jump out of shield. Kuro getting punished for that. What do? A two stock. Dude. What? What do? What do? What do? Like, uh, it's. Play safe. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> play safer. Play, play, <laughs> play, a, play a zoner, man. Play a. Let's see the pit. I'm actually. I would be so excited to see the pit. I'm very interested in what would come out of that. Meki looking super dominant right there. Not a whole lot that Kuro was able to do. You know, was able to win a couple exchanges, not able to get anything crazy going. You know, that Nair flip kick was probably the closest he was going to get to, to bringing that to a final stock situation. It was literally just, you saw just like Kuro just literally exploding, literally off of just like back air, fair, all types of stuff. So here we go again on FD. So no place to run, you got to fight. Mm. This is looking very similar to how the first one started, right? Like, Kuro gets a bunch of damage, and then Umeki gets that one opening. He starts putting on the percent. Which is fair. God, and he's just not respecting him, like, just going in and get, getting fair for it. Yep. There's going to be the back air out of shield. The fair. Continuing this advantage state, Umeki just doing such a great job. Finally, though, Kuro fighting his way back in. He's got the stage control. He's kind of pushing Becky into the corner, but then he puts himself in the corner. Overcommits, and then he gets up smash trying to take stage back over. That was a really, really good call out. That was very, very slick. Ah. All right, go. Kuro. He can get that back up. Ah, close. the float. Able to get back to stage real, real safe. Like, and there we go. That's what it, that's what that he really up wants, right? We haven't seen a lot of down smashes at all from Kuro. Kuro just kind of has been happy to poke with uh, the Zare, the forward airs, uh, Nair as well. But, uh, you know, at the ledge, we're kind of seeing it on get-up options or a potential two-frame, but past that, not much. Here we go, the juggle, and uh, going to let him land on stay safely. So, 
putting on 57% on the Meki, and now we see him misplacing the uh, Zares again. So he's being played, all right. And Meki. The side there. of the stage here. Kuro, he gets that Paralyzer. There and then the Nair nice. back air, that was crisp. Spacing with that Nair, getting the Zares as well. Meki fighting back, taking stage. He's got to seal the stock out pretty soon or else he's going to have too much percent put on him. Yeah. He'll be all over the place today. Here we go. Kuro, it's in the 94%. Just kind of just like, <laughs> just doing yeah. the safest range move. That's, he knows, dude. He learned last <laughs> game. I can't be pressuring like that. Oh, thought that we were going to see a back air of shield right there, but Meki happy to take that grab. Right, and with that turn up in hand, he kind of made him make a choice. He was just right. like, bro, if you go down, I'm going to drop. Oh. If you're not getting a sop, uh, the sweet spot of that, and going to be able to recover here. Meki playing super, super whiff punish. He's just chilling on the other side of the stage. You got to come to me. And he's at a deficit, too. Called him okay. out and he got to the corner of the blast zone. Not dead yet. Yep, stopping the uh, the down there off that. And I think you're actually happy taking that turn up, right? Because you get to reset to the ledge and Mech is not there to cover it. Okay. That one he held in just a bit too much. He might have been dead anyways, though. Yeah, I was going to say that sent that at a quite an angle. So, uh, hey, and staying air, airborne oh. like this is, is really the answer because if Kuro right. stays grounded, here it is. Oh, my goodness. And jumped out of that combo. Very smart. Yes, sir. Give me this. And. Trying to go for some more. Good parry. Goes for the down air after the parry. Not able to complete it, though. Oh, Kuro fighting out of that. The trades for him. There's the down smash. Run up, up E. That should seal it out. Yep. And he got the farthest possible range. Mm -hmm. Right? He got, like, the, the very, very, very the, Yes, the pixel that froze. Mm -hmm. And was able to get that kill off that. So, nice on Kuro. So, 1-1 one, one between Umeki and Kuro right now. Yeah, this is a best of five. These guys are scrapping. We're seeing the FD pick really come in into play there. You know, Meki had nowhere to retreat to. Yeah. Uh, standing underneath the platform as Peach is really, really menacing because your opponent can't really approach you from above without unsafely putting themselves on that platform. Yeah. So now it's going to be uh, the counter pick of Umeki. Where are you going to go, buddy? Where are you going to take your wife? Somewhere nice, I hope. Somewhere where uh, she She's can a, just yeah, go out and be, and be free, you know what I'm saying? And then, whoa. <laughs> whoa. All right, just Mechie the run ran it back. Meki not caring about the stage at all. And I guess it makes sense, right? FD has a lot of space for Peach combos to extend all the way across the stage. So it's not that absurd. But I think that overall, Kuro gets more out of this than Meki does. Right, this is kind of, uh, this is kind of what, uh, ooh, uh, ooh. wow. That Becker actually no. the, the Simon Belmont, took but the no. Float. Had to up me early there. Looking for it. Gets the down tilt. Maybe gonna go for a down smash. Not able to get the two frames. Gonna say uh, superb edge guarding right now. Coming out from Kuro. And Kuro's like, yo. The down smash works. Let's just keep trying. He's like, I don't know why you took me back here. I don't know why. Kuro right. poking. Yeah, this has kind of been Umeki's like, you know, problem. He wants to get in, cause the big damage. But when you got OOS options like that, it's really, really difficult, especially when they kill. So, yeah, it's hard. You, you really got to cross up uh, the ZSS player, make them think that you're going to be on one side and actually be on the other. Throw those aerials on ZSS shield, especially at high percent. Low percent, who cares? Go hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Go hit him. I mean, just not being able to get these fares and. Uh, F yeah. One of those, like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm final again. Yeah, I think that might have been just like ants moving too fast. Yeah. Like, looking for probably like down tilt fair or something like that. Getting hit by the last hit? Okay. Had him at 50. The, the, the whip, though? The plasma whip? All right, respect my range. You can't come in here. Yeah. Yep. Oh my. Oh, yep. And finally got that hit in. Still not going to kill, though. Kuro playing super safe off stage, gonna use the flip kick, just take advantage. And that's the thing, right? Like, I like to think of advantage and disadvantage as kind of a spectrum, and you have to play neutral in between to get between them, right? But the thing is that ZSS gets to bypass that neutral. Yeah. So if you overcommit your positioning, then she gets to go straight from disadvantage into advantage. Right, and able to get that uh, that share off into that uh, that pair, but not dying yet, and the flip kick to get back in center stage, another flip kick. These flip wow. kicks, man, I, what can what can Kumeki do? Yeah, yeah, sit there and hold it. Like, you have to be predicting that pretty much in order to punch that. 
And now you're at this damage where, like, uh, you do one bad thing on shield, you might get a beat. Oh boy, and that, gave, that cross up. <laughs> Burrow just poking. He's been hanging on to the stock for a really long time, and finally, Umeki gonna take it. 150. That was, I mean, he put on some really good extra credit with the 86 as well. I knew they wanted to uh, get a little combo going off with that uh, turn up, and now 101. The up air, off the flow, and hunting. I like babysitting off stage like that, though. Kind of just saying, you can't just hold in and recover lazy. Yeah. Make him make him choose something. Uh oh, the combo, there, down tilt. Quick 47, but then Kuro just takes the advantage right back, and then the plasma whip coming out, taking that second stock. Yeah, range is actually coming into a big factor here because we have not seen Umeki be this close to get. And as I say that, take the words back, please. And that small exchange going back in the lead. Dude, high key, I think Umeki took that hit on purpose. Because then ZSS is in so much lag, and then you get to hit him with the turn of pair. God, it was, uh, that was in, uh, Kuro was in big, big control for a while, and now... Kinda, um, it's a little bit more scrappy, it's a little bit more back and forth than it was. Kuro kind of lost a bit of momentum with that turn of pair. Now Umeki, holding down the stage, Kuro able to take it right back with the flip kick. Oh, better roll. I don't know if I like showing that roll read right now. Just because it's like he's at 78, he's not really going to die to that, I don't think. Yeah, and, and it's even in oh. game and stock right now. Yeah. So you got to you gotta save that card for later. You just run up and do it, though. Stitch in hand. Just waiting for the right time for him to land. And that, that opportunity has not arrived yet. yet. And now, Umeki is 69%. Oh, that was a read and a half. Yeah, Plus, I'm hooked on Phonics. I don't know what he was trying to yeah, do. Yeah, bro, I don't know what Rocky was trying to, like, hit over there, but... Throw a 133. One oh. back air. <gasps> Caught him holding out. And that's the thing. Like, on that there, you do want to hold out on the DI, like, to make sure that that there, uh, back air doesn't connect as well. But because it was just the perfect timing, he manages to get it, and he wasn't holding in in time. Man. So... Bro, you know, it looked a little shaky for him game one. Yeah. Not on front. But like, uh, this FD pick, kind of working out for him. Yeah, and I'm, again, I was like surprised that Mecki was down to run it back, and we're running it back again. Mecki doesn't care. Beat you on your own stage. I have to, I have to assume that it's just like, bro, like, there has to be something about like FD that is just like that Umeki likes. I know that Japan in general just loves the stage. So that might have something to do with it. Okay. But uh, Umeki putting on some unanswered percent here. Quick 51. Kuro just starting to be able to talk back right now. Here we go. Just back air. So we Mech see, yeah, we, I was about to say, we see Umeki yeah. like kind of just like adapting to this whole situation. It's just like, okay, well, if I have to respect your range, I gotta make every hit worth it. And now we see the cross ups happening. Trying to challenge the flip kick, not going. And this man has been getting back aired like nine times, bro. What's up? Yeah, I mean, Kuro, as long as he doesn't die and he can like start poking well like this, this is huge. So as long as he can keep hang on to this stock, he's in a pretty decent position, all things considered. There's gonna be the pair. He will not be able to hang on to that stock. Here we go. Now we see uh, Kuro uh, Umeki. I'm sorry. We see Umeki for the first time, like not with a lead. Doesn't have a lead for this first time. It's crazy. So now Umeki's gonna work a little. Uh, not Umeki, but Kuro has to work a little bit harder. Try to seal this stock up, man. Yeah, you thought Umeki was camping before and just letting Kuro come to him. Now he's got the lead. He doesn't have to do anything. Okay, this damage differential is getting a little too high. Kuro kind of letting this get away from him, and the flip kick, and... Yeah, that up he had a shield. Almost doing the trick. But the fair off stage will. <coughs> Kuro, a strong... He's, like, his strongest thing is, like, being able to kill, right? He's been doing a great job of sealing out these stocks from Umeki pretty early. The issue is just that he's getting hit a lot. Of yeah. process. Okay, another fair. I mean, Umeki putting in a lot of work this time, and another fair setting him at disadvantage. It's just this man is going coast to coast. 
You've been to space. Zero Suit, where you want to go next? <laughs> Ooh, called out that movement with the fair. I like it. Mackie up a full stock at this point. Yeah, he, does, he doesn't care about FD, man. Just keep doing it. Doesn't care one bit. See, uh, my man uh, Umeki has cleaned up a lot. That's a double jump taken. Ooh, that might have done it if he hit that. Recognizing the down smash charge is going to come out. Umeki just going high. Not able to take the advantage back. Ooh, I like that read, but just a little preemptive. Here we go, Kuro. Kind of losing his edge a little bit, man. This, uh... This uh, this this piece is really like really like closed in, getting these damages in short bursts, and it's been paying off in dividends. Yeah, and Kuro's not in too bad of a position right now. If he can manage to take this stock, he's done a good job of putting the percent on, keeping advantage. Meki taking it right back. Oh, read that super super hard. Not able to punish it though. Still able to keep positional advantage. There's the back air out of shield. Kuro kind of getting desperate with these landing options, getting off stage. The normal getup gets called out by the fair, and we've got a game five. That turnip was just like, it was the threat of the turnip in hand. Right. Because in my head, I'm thinking like, okay, he might throw this up. But instead, he goes for the fair instead. And uh, that's just the power of persuasion that uh, having an item in your hand has. And uh, are they going to go to the battlefield? Yeah, and like, in that sense, it's almost like fake set play, right? Because when you've got the turnip in hand, your opponent is forced to respect it. Yeah. And then once they're forced to respect it in the same way that like Pikachu Thunder Jolting from across the stage you have to respect, you know, your options change. You don't do the same things that you would do normally and you get forced into a situation that your opponent can punish. All right, so 2-2 two, two between these guys. Game five. Umeki stretching out. He's like, dog, I've had to meander around the zero suit for a while now, so. I'm ready, I'm ready to play. I'm ready, I'm ready to try to stay in the uh, winner's side of 128. I'm looking at Kuro right now, I'm seeing like, he's he, he's trying to like find himself again. He's chilling himself out, you know, making sure that he's got his head in the game. Focus up, that's what it's all about. Hey, that's good damage, drops the turnip too, that's big. Yeah, just because he dropped that turnip, Umeki had to commit time to pulling the turnip there, and uh, Kuro was able to punish it. All right, a lot of give and take between both of these guys, and see really, really good moves being played. Umeki trying not to overcommit on anything, and yes, get your damage where it's worth, guys. Yes, sir, 84% off the down tilt. Umeki, Another fair. He's doing such a good job of just being menacing by standing still. He's not committing to any options. Waiting for Kuro to commit first, and then he's punishing afterwards. Which has really been, you know, the, the deal for this whole entire set. It's right. just like one one person over commits, I punish like this. Other person over commits, I punish like that. And uh, it's really just been, the, and that's why the, it's been a back and forth between yeah. both these guys so far. And the issue has been that Kuro is the one who has to present the mix ups on approaching, right? And that's just so rough for ZSS. We only have so many options, and that back here getting called out as Kuro was trying to go hide and take stage control back. This day, 35, though, 70. 70, oh my god. He's like, bro, let me get my damage real fast, and that lead just got thinner and thinner. Yeah, man, that is demoralizing for Kuro. That really hurts. Yeah, trying to see if he did it now, the shield option first, and went ahead and just ran with it. He's like, nah, you're not going to do anything. And when Umeki has the turn up in hand, his options of her shielding, like uh, uh, pressure on the shield in front, are significantly better because you know the back air's got the range in the back, but in the front, all he's got is turn up if he's got it in the hand. So if he doesn't, out of shield options significantly worse. And because that Umeki was able to take that second stock, the turn up in hand was huge. I'm telling you, man, this item play that uh, Umeki's been doing this uh, this game specifically is just paid in full. This man is at uh, help with the boost kick after the down smash, and it's gonna. Net a kill, but still one stock lead for Umeki. Yeah, full stock too, and there's the percent with the turnips. So Umeki's combo game has definitely come alive here in game five. Oh, calling him out, looking for a back air. Mm. There's the up air, some good damage. Oh, tried to go for a grab, that was a good mix up. Maybe Umeki thought that he was gonna, uh, you know, do something else, like, uh, you know, it, it, obviously Kuro in that situation could have gone for a fair, could have gone for a nair or something like that, uh, and, you know, Umeki with a quick roll in. Yeah, that was a really good, that was a really good air dodge. He was about to get uh, carried oh. off stage, and every time he has jumped into him after a roll in, he has, like, up smashed him. But now the damage differential has gotten higher and higher, so it might be zero hour for a Kuro right here. Oh, and, the uh, Meki 
He's so close, just one exchange could do this right now. One turn of hitting. That blow was menacing. I'm not going to front. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. And he's, look, he's got the turn up in hand again. He's looking for back air. He's looking for nair. He's yep. looking for up smash. I was going <gasps> to say, watch how you jump on him. And the trade. the trade with the nair. He'll take it, and Umeki is going to move on on winner's side with the daisy. Don't downplay that character. <laughs> I ain't trying to hear nothing. Character's don't good. I'm trying don't to downplay out. that character. That character's good, bro. Don't downplay it, baby. I want to know if that oh, man. was an upset. You know? Because cause oh. these guys both really good. I'm not sure exactly how their seeding went. Uh, oh, no, it definitely was because Kuro was number one okay. seed in his pool and Umeki was the number two seed. He took out Cosmos. Word, word. So good stuff to Umeki. I mean, already surpassing expectations by beating Cosmos, now beating Kuro as well. So now next up we have uh, Big D yes. versus Goblin. Yeah, so Big D beat Proto Bonham to get here. He's the Japan Slayer, dude. Yeah. This guy doesn't lose to Japanese players. He's beaten Zachary. He's beaten uh, Proto. This guy just does it all. Whereas Goblin, he might be something of a